Hey guys, today I'm going to be getting this video started, doing something that I don't normally do on video, but I don't really know what I am going to be recording today, so I thought I would straighten my hair with you. Let's just see how it works out. It's been years since I straightened my hair. I did spray it with some heat protectant, so let's see what happens. Um, I can straighten my hair and walk out into the rain it curls right back up i could straighten my hair and uh sweat <laughs> it curls right back up maybe not as much but some but yeah it doesn't take much to curl my hair back up that's why i don't take the time to straighten it very often there are a couple of videos on my channel with it straight, but not many because I just don't do it. It's been, what, seven years almost? I mean, November will be seven years since I started this channel. And there's maybe, at the most, five. At the most. Um, five videos with it straight. And I'm probably going to use the camera lens to do it so I'm not turned away from you guys I may look that way but I'm mostly gonna be doing this but I thought I would talk to you about uh, today while I'm doing this and um, this is also not the straightener I normally use the one I normally use doesn't seem to be coming on and it doesn't I don't know if it's plugged up or not and I'm not fighting to plug it up. So this one takes me a little bit longer to do. And I don't straighten my hair the way other people do. I, I just, I don't section it like others and do little piece by little piece. I just kind of, um, grab some and go. <laughs> Maybe that's why it doesn't take me as long. I don't know. But today is Thursday, the day I'm filming this. And I was going to be doing the black eyed peas and fries and cornbread for supper. And I did put the peas in the refrigerator to soak, but I'm probably gonna end up not cooking that tonight. I will probably end up cooking that tomorrow which we don't have anything planned for tomorrow because if you remember me talking about it um, whenever I shared the menu plan with you guys we didn't plan any of the weekends so this Friday Jeff is off work so we didn't plan it either so I'll probably just cook that because when Jeff gets home we're going somewhere so that's happening or supposed to happen I don't know uh, if it for sure will or not but we're supposed to go take his sister our lawn chairs or our you know the fold up chairs for um, whenever we go to the rodeo because she'll have to be there earlier to she's working the rodeo so she'll have to be there earlier to set and she can set them up somewhere where her daughter is going to be and her son is going to be so we can sit with them. So anyway, so we will be together. But we work, Jeff and I were supposed to work the rodeo with them. She had asked us to, but then they changed some stuff. Not her or her husband. Somebody else did. So we're not working it with them. They, um, the fire department puts the rodeo on and they are volunteer fire departments actually <clears throat> volunteer fire people actually they are volunteers where we first um the first place we volunteered and if we you know whenever we move back we'll volunteer again there but um her husband's now the fire chief he's been in the fire department I don't know if he's been in it longer than Jeff whenever before Jeff and I started or he started after I don't remember 
but his daddy's been in it for a long time too I think his brother too I don't know but it was something we used to do whenever we lived there and also whenever we lived at the place where we lived um, the last place we lived but that was in a rural community so they didn't have like paid firemen you know they didn't have firemen who were they only had volunteers that's all they had because it was so far out which is not terribly far from any town but I think that that town is so small that even theirs is volunteer but I'm not positive about that I could be wrong but I think it is now I do section when it comes to this but I don't do little bitty sections and all that nobody taught me how to do my hair how to straighten it I just decided I wanted to try it so I bought a straightener and did it had a friend in school who used to iron hers with a a hair I mean not with a hair with a clothes iron she would put her head on the ironing board and or put her hair on the ironing board and iron it like she was ironing in a shirt except in a very weird position but that's the way she did it because her parents wouldn't let her have a flat iron You would have never known unless she told you though. Because it looked the same. <laughs> As if she had a flat iron. I don't know how she knew what temperature to put it on. I got to get this little bit right here. This is always the little bit that is always a little more honoring and doesn't want to straighten as much. I actually. I have not straightened my hair since I got this much gray, so I have no clue what it looks like straight and gray. Not this much gray, anyway. The air conditioner seems to be making a funny noise. Or it's just me, I don't know. I even put makeup on today I don't know I usually don't hardly ever wear makeup well I don't hardly ever wear makeup anymore anyway but I really don't wear it in the summer because it just melts right off I don't know why I decided to flat iron it today other than or straighten it today other than I just hadn't done it in so long thought why not I'm gonna have to figure out if that other straightener is plugged up or not though because now it's, you know, one of those things that's bothered me. But, so today's plan, since I'm probably not going to be cooking, is to fold those clothes. I've got to edit a video. Actually, I've got to edit two videos. So I'm going to grab my laptop and edit one of them and on there and the other one on my desktop. I used to not be able to do that because I didn't have both that worked. I always had both. Well, not always. Not when I first had a computer. I only had a desktop then. But I've had both for years, but my laptop that I used to have was super slow. 
I got this one a few years ago, two or three years ago, and I like it. And sometimes it seems a little bit faster with editing than my desktop does. But I don't use it most of the time for editing. I don't know why. I just don't. trying to make sure I get all of it because the way I do it I do miss some sometimes I don't use a lot of heat on my hair anyway because I let it air dry I used to I used to use a hair dryer because I thought I had to and I used to use um, let's see, how do I want to do this? Um, anyway, I used to use a hair dryer all the time. I used to use curly iron. I have curly hair, but I used a curling iron to straighten it more. But it was still curled. So I could do these certain styles that I used to do, which I probably could not do. Well, I know I couldn't do some of them because I had bangs before. Um, and I don't have bangs now. In fact, it had been so many years since my friend Christy had seen me. She said, you used to have bangs, didn't you? I said, yeah, I did. Because I used to try to hide my forehead. I don't even know why. Other than that little um, beauty mark is what everybody calls it around here. I tried to hide it. Then I had Noah, and he has one. And I don't try to hide it anymore. Whenever I had him, I was like, my baby's beautiful. And he's got one. <laughs> I still had bangs some just because, but that it wasn't for the same reason. But I always seem to go back now to no bangs. Because it's so much less maintenance. So much less to do. And I think that's one reason why I don't flat iron my hair as much. Or straighten my hair as much. Because this is a lot. How long has this taken me so far? 12 minutes? Which I know I'm talking to y'all. Which some people say it takes them a lot longer than this. But. I don't know. I'm not done yet though so. I know some people spend a lot of time on their hair in the mornings. I don't. <laughs> I don't spend a lot of time on it. I will spend more time on this last part than any of it. Most likely. Well, not any of it, but. I don't know. I don't know what I'll, if I will or not though. I may not have to spend much time on it. And I may go ahead and use some hairspray too. And kind of like go through real quick with a flat iron again. I sometimes do that just to try to hold it. And I'm still considering putting some of that red dye in it like streaks. But I don't know. And I really don't know if I'm getting it all straight. <laughs> this is crazy deal doing this on camera. Gotta 
get this straight. See, I always have problems with parts of it because it doesn't want to do the same thing on both sides. It never does. I don't know. It does not look right to me. <laughs> Something about it is not right. Maybe it's because I'm not used to seeing it. Straight. Maybe it's because this top part is trying to be complete. Okay, it turned off, but I can't get the part straight most of the time, and that's usually why I don't part my hair. Or if I do part it, it's over to the side because then it just doesn't matter. But anyway, that's good enough. I'm not going anywhere fancy or anything anyway, and it's going to be changed as soon as I shower. Unless I decide to go wash my hair today and put it back to the curls. But that's what it looks like, straight. I feel like I have lumps. I may not have, but I feel like I do. But, I'm gonna go and I'll be back whenever I start folding clothes. Okay, so it's been probably about an hour since I straightened my hair, and as you can see, it's already kind of curling back up in places. My hair just doesn't like to be straight. That's okay though. I mean, I have flat ironed it and it stayed straight, but I use lots of products that I don't own anymore because I don't buy them anymore because I don't straighten my hair all the time. But that's not what this part of the video is about. Um, I mentioned that I won't be cooking in this video because we're just doing black eyed peas, cornbread, and french fries. I've done that with you guys before and I will be doing it again, I'm sure. And if I do cook, that's what it's going to be. But it would be after I'm done recording for the day and I won't, I don't want to be recording anymore. Because there's a certain time of the day where I just, I'm done. So I do have clothes to fold, which I told you guys. And I told you that I wanted to do like a folding study. <laughs> so that's what I've decided I'm going to do today. I'm going to go ahead and we're going to discuss this. But what I plan to do, this is the way I plan to do it is I plan to look at this a little bit and talk with you a little bit about it and then um, while I'm like talk, let me start that over look at this and get started and then while I'm folding talk to you about what's going on what my thoughts are so this week is trust his track record and we were supposed to be reading judges 11 through 21 and Psalm 26 through 37 so if you didn't read it, that's fine. If you did read it, that's great. It's up to you if you read it or not. You don't necessarily have to read the whole thing. I mean, that is the point of these books, so you get through the whole Bible in a year. But um, my thought is, as long as you're in the Word, it's okay. And I know some people can't just sit and read like a lot. Like my mama cannot sit and read because she can't you know see as well and she can't just you can't sometimes so she listens to the bible listening to the bible is just as good but anyway it doesn't matter that's not anything to do with what i'm talking about today um she's talking about um she this book is talking about psalm 30 uh where david is reminiscing thanking god for his sovereignty sovereignty i cannot say that word most time and reflecting on the lord's lord's goodness towards him he remembers a time when he didn't always do the right thing, but God was merciful. 
when he began to really prosper, David got a little full of himself and started doing things his own way. When he began to operate in error, he felt that God had hidden his face from him. But that didn't last long. David says in verse 5, For his anger is but for a moment. His favor is for life. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. So, I want to kind of go from there. I'm not going to read it all. If you have the book, you can read it. Um, you don't have to have the books to do the study. But it goes on down it's to the a little bit further. It says, Jesus died so we'd all be saved. And that, that should give us assurance that he's not finished yet. Because there are souls yet to be saved. We have seen how he has covered us through massive storms, kept us through terrible car wrecks and spared lives, the lives of family members. I believe he can be trusted to do those things again and so much more. There is no limit to what our God can do. So I'm going to look at that one. That's that a little bit. Okay. And then I'm going to get the other one. And we're going to talk a little bit um, about what she has to say, which y'all know that I don't love this book. But I'm still doing it, you know, just to see. Um, still the same thing. Trust God's track record. This is Allison Felix is now the most decorated American athlete in track and field Olympic history. I have no idea who she is. After she had a baby, many counted her out, but with persistence, determination, and talent, she proved God right and everyone who doubted her wrong. No one can take her accomplishments away. Her track record is proof. God also has a remarkable record. God continuously directed and kept promises to his people and to the people of Israel. He released them from power of Pharaoh and provided a way in the wilderness. While they disobeyed God, God continuously rescued them from destruction. So that's another example of where God had worked even though people were being disobedient. So I'm not going to read it all. I'm just going to talk now because, like I said, you don't have to have the books. So, I know in my life, there have been times, and we always go back to my life because it's the only one I know. Right? I mean, that's what we go by. What we live. Um, there have been times when I was not obedient to God. When I went my own way and did my own thing and regretted it gratefully i mean a great great what is the word greatly yeah not gratefully well i am grateful that i regretted it honestly i am because if i had never regretted what i was doing i wouldn't have seen that god was pulling me back to him um and i also can see during those times that i was being disobedient to the lord that he was still playing a huge part in my life. Um, if you see me not fold clothes, it's because I'm putting them on hangers. I may partially fold them, but I'm not going to fold them all the way, some of them. So, let's just keep going with the study. Okay. So, throughout my life, I have, there was a point where I thought I was a Christian. I thought I was doing what I was supposed to be doing. I thought I had given my life to the Lord, but then... And I could have been right. I don't know. I don't know now. Like, looking back, I'm not sure if I was fully dedicated to him the way he is dedicated to us. Um, but I had thought that I was a good Christian. I thought I was doing right. And then just little things, which actually, they're not really little, but things that are little to God threw me off track. I got off track. I started doing things I shouldn't have done. Um, I stopped following God. And I just went back to things I shouldn't have been doing. Or I went to things that I had never done before but I shouldn't have been doing that I knew were wrong. Now, we all, I'm sure, at times have done this. Some of, the, um, uh, some of us have done it for an extremely short time. Some of us have done it for a, an extremely long time. Some of us have gone years on the wrong track. Some of us, we've gone moments on the wrong track or weeks or days or whatever. You know, it doesn't matter how long. 
that's not what we're looking at. Like, um, the people in the desert, 40 years, they went the wrong way. But God still took care of them. And we know that David went the wrong way. But God was still taking care of him. He was still guiding him through the prophet. He was still telling him what he needed to do. He still rewarded him with being a king because he was the one that was supposed to be and that was the God, that was the way that God had planned it. That was God's plan. So we have to know that even though our record is marred, even though our record is off color, it's bad, it's sometimes truly a sad track record, um, even though we know right from wrong, we sometimes fail, but God never does. He never fails. And there's so many occasions in the Bible where that God's mercy is shown. Um, there's places in the Bible, I cannot remember exactly where it's at, like where that God helps people just because they have faith enough to ask. Um, just like the woman who had the issue of blood. Now, it doesn't say she did anything wrong. But she knew she wasn't supposed to touch the hem of his garment. And, you know, because of Jewish custom, I would say, that's what I think. I could be wrong. Y'all could tell me if I'm wrong. But she she was she knew she was doing something that she probably shouldn't well she probably wasn't supposed to do but she did it anyway and god blessed her he healed her and um sometimes our reasoning for not doing things is because of customs some of those customs are worldly and we will follow those worldly customs and they are wrong and we'll think that they're right, but God's still there. Um, like there are different, there are different denominations in the church that, and my belief is there will be people from every denomination in heaven. Denominations don't matter because in the beginning there was no denomination there was just Christ followers so and I, I know that some people don't agree with that some certain denominations believe they are the only ones going to heaven um, certain ones believe that you've got to do these very strict um, things to go to heaven some believe that you um, can be saved through someone else even after you're dead so you can go to heaven there's a lot of different things that a lot of misconceptions in the world of um, in the Christian world now those misconceptions can cause some people to stumble but I believe that even during those stumbling because those people don't know any better mostly because they're not in the word for themselves or because that denomination has changed the Bible because there are certain ones that have. Um, I believe that there still be people from that that's going to be in heaven is what I'm trying to say. I'm not saying, okay, the reason why I feel that way is because I believe there will be people accepting Christ from every denomination. That's my whole point. Now, you do have to accept Christ before you are a Christian. You have to accept Christ to go to heaven. I don't believe that for people certain ages, like babies and things like that, you know. There's a, a, an age of accountability where that you know what you should and shouldn't be doing and things like that. But I'm talking about adults who do know and I also believe myself that there will be people who um, have mental 
uh, I don't want to say the wrong word. You know, there are people who don't ever reach, let's just say they don't reach the age of accountability mentally, even though they are that age physically. Um, I believe there will be people in heaven there that are like that. that. There may be adults, but they never accepted Christ, but they never were adults in their mind. They, they weren't ever, they could never comprehend God's word, if that makes sense. But then again, some of those people comprehend God's word way better than we do. Um, and I know all of this that I'm saying is even off track and I don't even know why I got on that subject other than I just want people to understand what I'm saying I'm not saying that everybody's going to go to heaven and everybody's going to be you know it's all going to be wonderful and no matter what you do you're going to get there I'm not saying that what I'm saying is on our journey to God because you have to reach God while on earth before you can get to heaven. Um, on our journey towards God, toward his, towards his will, we'll make mistakes. But those mistakes are not counted once we have given our lives to the Lord. They all go away. Every mistake that I made that I have asked forgiveness for, it goes away. And I believe that we are to ask forgiveness every time we feel like, every time that we know we've made a mistake, like even Christians, even the best Christian in the world who is following God's word as closely as they can will make a mistake. There'll be some anger, there'll be some something we all have stumbling blocks we all have um, things that are temptations we all have like like I have told you before I have dealt with anger for years I am much better than I used to be but anger will still at times stumble me up and I'll have to ask forgiveness for that I'll have to ask forgiveness from the person that I was angry at, and I will have to ask forgiveness from God. Now, do you always have to ask the person that you upset? Not necessarily because, or the person you were angry at or whatever, or whatever the problem was. You don't always have to go to that person, but you always have to go to God. I don't think any of this is making sense. I feel like I, I'm, I'm off, like off topic too much and off in crazy deal somewhere but maybe this is what somebody needs to hear today I don't know but it does say you know in that little book to not look at our track record because okay on the outside a lot of people probably think I'm a very good person that has always been a good person that has always done right and I can't say that I'm a terrible person okay right there <laughs> it cut off but I can't say that I'm a terrible person I can't say that I've ever been a terrible person but I know for a fact I have done wrong I am not perfect nor will I ever be I will never claim to be perfect. I will never claim to be right. I will never claim to be anything other than what I am. I am a flawed human who serves a great big God who has taken me through all of the bad things I've done in my life and held me up through those bad things who has plotted my course so to speak and helped me to see those things for what they were helped me to see the right way out of them and who has always been right there with me even though a lot of times in my life I was doing wrong so 
once we have asked that forgiveness and once we have come to God and we have poured out our hearts to Him and dedicated our lives to Him, we need to not look at our track record. Because if we do that, it's just going to keep bringing us down. It's just going to keep making us feel guilt that we shouldn't have because God has erased all of that. And I feel like every single time we go back to the guilt and the shame, and I mean, yeah, there's a certain degree that we need to keep in our memory so we don't make the same mistakes, but we don't have to dwell on those things. We can let those things go. We can give them to God like we're supposed to be, leave them at the cross, so to speak. Because every time we take it back, every time that we count our record, we are, what's the word? We are discounting, is that it? We are just making God's record void, null and void, pretty much. Like we didn't trust him enough to clean our slate, to clean our record. Now I know that other humans will know the wrong we've done, part of it. I know that God still knows what we've done, but he's not counting it against us. So we shouldn't either. Once we've asked for that forgiveness, we should allow that forgiveness to be given. And we should forgive ourselves. And that has been like one of the biggest problems I've had up until the last few years. It took me a long time to actually forgive myself for the wrong I've done. And like, whenever, okay, the wrong I did whenever I thought I was a Christian, but I walked away from God, and I do believe I was a Christian at the time. I was just, I was still a Christian on milk. I never got to the meat. I never got to the adult part of being a Christian. I never learned how to do things for myself, like study God's word and trust God. And because of that, I very easily walked away from God. Um, but this time, when I rededicated my life, I got into the Word deeper. I learned on my own how to get into the Word because I didn't have the guidance I needed. I learned that if I did not stay in God's Word and trust His Word, then I would never be able to stay with God and I learned to trust him I learned to believe what he said I learned to believe that once he said it that's it once he told me I was forgiven I was forgiven and nothing could change that nothing could take that away except me walking away from him and yes, I'm still forgiven for those things, but if I go back and I, I, I backslide again, if I, if I go back to my old ways again, if I get into the worldliness again, then I've walked away from God. Now, I am not saying you can't do things like, I'm not saying you can't listen to only Christian music, because let me tell you, I have learned so many different Christian artists are not what they're supposed to be. They don't believe God's word like that they should. Uh, there's a lot of them that are supporting worldly things. So, quite honestly, I'm very skeptical <laughs> about some of that now. I'm like, I've been listening to this music for so long, and they're not even living the life they're telling us to live. They're not even practicing what they're preaching. Um... And I'm not going to talk about who they are or anything like that. You can figure it out for yourself. Um, if you if you do want to talk about any of it or learn who any of them are, you can always email me. But I will not have it on my channel because 
I'm, I'm just not gonna do that. I could maybe direct you to channels that I've watched or something like that, but I'm not gonna. Or to websites or something like that. I'm not gonna put that on my channel because that's not what this channel is about. But uh, there are also pastors and some of you have probably heard about it. They, they've gone the wrong way. Um, they're not practicing what they're preaching. And if I ever get to that point where that you see that I'm not practicing what I'm preaching, I want you to call me out. I want you to tell me, because that's what we're assigned to do, um, is to help each other by telling each other, hey, you're going the wrong way. That's not right. So I don't believe that if you listen to some old country music or old classic rock or anything like that, that you're wrong. I don't believe that. I don't believe that women wearing jeans, because I'm wearing jeans, say I know jeans. <laughs> I don't believe that women wearing pants is wrong. I don't believe that women wearing makeup is wrong. I don't believe that women wearing jewelry is wrong. I'm talking about these things because that's what I was taught in as a child. Um, that's what I know. That's what I grew up in is being told that you're that all these different things are wrong and then to feel guilt about it now that track record you have to be careful of because that track record was false too uh you, you believed you were sinning even though you weren't because of legalism that's a whole different subject so let's get off of it um i don't even know where i was going with all this oh yes i do um worldly things as in maybe you like this certain artist who sings a certain kind of music and the music's not bad the words that this person's singing is they're not bad they're not telling you to do things you shouldn't be doing that are against god but they're not a christian artist okay i don't see anything wrong with it going to a concert i don't see anything wrong with listening to their music as long as you're not worshiping that person, if that makes sense. I don't see anything wrong with enjoying shopping, as long as you don't make shopping your worship. I don't see anything wrong with collecting certain types of things, as long as you don't make that collection your worship. Um, that's what I'm talking about. You know, there's a lot of things people do in the world that could be a sin because we live in this world. We have to be careful of what we're doing. But there's some things people are doing that, that could be a sin if they allowed it to be a sin, but it's not a sin. Even though some denominations tell you it's a sin. That's where I'm trying to go. There, that's just the way it is. That's, some denominations will do that. They will tell you certain things are wrong whenever they're not. Uh, you just have to be careful. You have to keep yourself in God's Word. And I say this all the time. Anytime I do a Bible study, you have to stay in the Word for yourself. Because, where did my Bible go? Oh, it's still here. Okay. Well, I'm not going to get it out. It doesn't matter. Um... I've already zipped it up, it's fine. But, what am I trying to say? We can't let someone else's personal convictions tell us how we should live. But we do need to respect that person's personal convictions as well. Am I even making sense today? I don't know. Maybe I am. We just have to be careful with everything we do. When it comes to being a Christian because we are scrutinized more and someone might say oh well I thought you were a Christian why are you doing that why are you listening to that why are you watching that well it may not be a sin for you but it may be a sin for them if that makes sense so we have to be careful and we have to look at what we're doing for God what we're doing in our lives but we have to look at what God has done more than anything 
Look at his track record. Look at all the times he has carried you. Look at all the times he has helped you through things, kept you from getting hurt, kept things from happening. Just like even making you late and then you get down on the interstate and then there's a huge wreck that you would have been involved in. Or maybe you don't go somewhere because of something and then you find out that there was something terrible happened at that place where you were supposed to be at at that time there's a lot of things God does for you there's even little things like God bring into your mind oh you need to check the oven to see if you left it on and you did and if you hadn't checked you don't know what might would have happened you know or maybe God is telling you um, go ahead and bring your dogs in uh, the house because you know it's starting to rain a little bit and then next thing you know a big limb has fallen in your yard and it could have killed one of your dogs you know something like that you got to look at all these things and I, that sounds very bad but it's a good thing that God showed you to do it you got to look at the little things God tells you to do that's what I'm trying to say you've got to remember all of the things he tells you if this little quiet voice is this still small voice that is in you that he will protect you even though we're not always right we're not always good we're not, not always perfect because we can't be we can't be right all the time we can't be perfect all the time and we also can't count our mistakes constantly. We can't count our good things constantly. I believe that if David had kept seeing all of the things that he had done wrong, instead of seeing what God had done for him, he would have failed completely. And I believe we will too. If we keep looking at what we are doing as humans, instead of looking at what God is doing as a great big God who loves us all, we're gonna fail completely. And I think that I need to shut up because I keep feeling like I'm repeating myself. I feel like this is getting to be a lot of the same thing over and over again. But we do have to stay in the Word we have to remember who God is and forget about our own little humanness. Um, well, not necessarily forget about it, but not dwell on our mistakes. Let's dwell on God. So, um, the next one is Ruth 1 through 4 and Samuel, 1 Samuel 1 through 17. So, Ruth 1 through 4 and 1 Samuel 1 through 17. I will put it in the description box. I'm hoping that this study and fold or whatever that you want to call these things that I'm going to do, I hope they work out better. I want to do it at least every other week, if not every week. Um, I plan to do it not this coming week, but the next. But I don't know. I may decide to go ahead and do it once a week. I haven't decided that part yet but as of now hopefully this first one was okay let's look at God and stop looking at ourselves I mean we do have to make sure we're doing right but let's not dwell on our own humanness as much as we dwell on God's goodness and God's godliness because that's what matters and if you ever want any like tips or tricks that I do or I have done to study the Bible all I can tell you is read it every day get a good concordance so you can be able to cross reference and stuff like that get a good reference um, and study Bible uh, cross reference and study Bible and get a Bible dictionary you don't need anything else. You don't need all of these books that people write. I'm telling y'all. Y'all know all the books I got rid of not long ago. 
95% of those books were from Christian authors. Some of them were pastors. Some of them still are who don't believe God's word the way that they preach it, who have shown that they are not doing what they say they're doing. They are not practicing what they're preaching. They are doing things that they... Okay, the camera shut off again. Anyway, those books were books that the pastors, some of them didn't even follow God anymore, or they were pastors and they're not anymore. They don't even follow, they're not Christians anymore, something like that. And some of them were, I mean, some of them were still good. I just wasn't ever going to read them again. And then others were people who don't, their, their worldly views, their, their world view is not biblical. And they've proven it publicly. Um, so, the only book I trust is the Bible. That's the way it is. That's the only book I trust. Ever. Anymore. I trust God's word and that's it. So, don't waste your money on books that, uh, unless you do your research of that person and you know. Just be careful. <laughs> be careful. Don't waste your money. Um, but anyway, I'm going to go. This is all I'm going to have for this video. I hope it was okay. It feels still very strange. I don't know if I'm supposed to be doing Bible studies. I want to. I feel it in my heart that I want to. But I still feel inadequate. I don't feel like I should be teaching God's Word because I don't know enough of God's Word. But I don't feel like I will ever know enough of God's Word. And I feel like if we ever feel like we know it all, that's when we failed. Because we're supposed to be, you know, having a relationship with God. And the way we do it is through His Word. Now I'm making myself think. That's a good thing. But anyway, I'm going to go. Thank you for hanging out with me today. I do appreciate it. I hope you guys did enjoy this in some way. Um, if you did, hit the like button. If you like my channel go ahead and subscribe and hit the bell to so be notified whenever i upload share this with your friends if you think somebody wants to see the crazy lady but most importantly leave me a comment down below let me know how you're doing and remember don't take any wooden nickels and be sweet